dude, that is so not 2024. It's Superman time. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter what year. It's Superman time. Stop. Superman time. And we don't. <laughs> Sorry. What the hell? It continues. I don't know how long their exterior shot shooting is going to be. Uh, and it seems a lot of it's taking place in broad daylight, which is yeah. interesting. Again, I, I think whether that's by choice or not, I'm sure we will see different times of day during the movie. But I think James Gunn, again, is embracing colorful and Superman stuff takes place in the middle of the day. Yeah. So you're going to see people in superhero suits walking around, not in like blue filtered shadows all the time and that kind of thing. It's like, no, they're just in these suits and they're walking downtown. <laughs> and you're going to be like, oh, is that a chick with wings? Mm -hmm. Damn. Oh, you also came to the I, I love that the last video did, you know, have a big chunk just about his hair. And then after we did that is when you were like going, holy crap, that's actually David Corn sweats just naturally. Yeah. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we're sitting there going, why would he have a perm? And it's like, no, that's just the way the it's guy just, looks. It is his hair, yeah. It still does raise a lot of questions. I, I we had some, I, there were some fun commenters. There was somebody saying, well, you know, Chris Reeve changes hair. I was like, well, yeah, we, oh, we did sure. mention that, but it's, that's minor. He just, he just combs it back. And then when he, when he's playing around a Superman, it goes forward again. Yeah. I mean, people, as, as if we didn't know, but yes, we do know that. Um, and this is the choice they're making. It's like, yeah, well, you're look at that guy and you're never going to think that's Superman. Plus, did you notice in all the shots where he is Clark, he's doing a thing with his mouth too. It's not just the hunch. He's doing kind of a like a lower lip out thing. Like, yeah, he's, yeah, he's kind of pouting. He's making himself look like a dork. Yeah. <laughs> he said they're going like, oh, yeah. That's part of the, the disguise. The, the thing with the hair is, and I, 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 of course, we already talked about this. It, it is, it, it poses a logistical problem because he, he's obviously he's got to comb it back with some kind of hair gel. That's obviously how it's styled for real. But when he's flying around and doing Superman stuff, how does he ensure that it doesn't just go poof and fall down in front of him when he's doing all that stuff? I will say this, and I will say this as one of the most nitpicky of nitpicky people, uh, and that's a tricky thing to say. I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> I, I, no honestly I, just like i know when, I, yeah yeah just like when i watched donner's film his hair changes you know uh but you're not seeing him do anything it's just from shot to shot if he's clark or he's superman the hair changes do we need to see him at a mirror going you know at super speed uh, <laughs> no i'm good <laughs> it's, it's like if that's a a superpower or just a super fast um uh gotta put on my costume i'm i'm all right I'm all right. I would like to see that though. <laughs> I would like, I mean, the thing just like in comics, I always thought like Clark reaching for, you know, like a donut at the daily planet and his white sleeve pulls back and then there's the blue under it. Like, oh shit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's the thing where I'm always thinking about if it's really under his clothes all the time, how are you disguising that? Because even him just like, excuse me, Mr. White putting his hand up, that would pull the sleeve down and like Clark, what are you wearing under your, uh, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Because that looks a lot like Superman. No, nope, Long John's. I'm very cold. <laughs> very, I have, I'm very cold. And I'll say too, I, a lot of people are saying, see, this is great because this solves the problem of how pe people not. I, I will say, I don't think that's a problem that needed to be solved. I think this is, again, <laughs> it's like, yes, it's unlikely that people wouldn't recognize him. But so what? It's Clark Kent. Yeah. Just, you know. Is this your way of saying just deal with it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm, right. Obviously, I'm going to be okay with it. I mean, especially knowing that that apparently is uh, David Corns, what's so natural hair, the way mm -hmm. it behaves when he's when it's not combed down. That's fine. So I'm 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 I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to move on. Glad. Yeah, you're so, moving on. So there's so much more to talk about. So I think yep. one of the most exciting things that we saw after we recorded that episode was Mr. Terrific running around, interacting with something we can't see. Yeah, but it is almost certainly a dog because I, people said that he was carrying a box of milk bones. He is carrying a box of milk bones. <laughs> yeah, so you can't see it, and I love. I I mean I don't know what this how it will tie in, but the idea that he's probably trying to get crypto, I, you know, I'm just like going, does that not blow your mind? I mean, if we get a live action Bizarro, we've had versions of live action Bizarros. And, you know, sometimes they nail it fairly well. We have we ever had live action crypto except for maybe the Superboy no. TV but show? He, well, he, I think he appeared in uh, Titans. 
I didn't see that episode, but I see oh, that. Oh, yes, see that he footage. did. That's right. He's a he dog did. in a cage with the, his, his yeah. eyes glow red. Well, actually, and he ended up being more of a character. Crypto. They actually do bring him in. I nearly okay. forgot that. So, but you know, never in a red cape and all that sort of thing. It's just like, oh yeah. I, I have a theory in that um, if if there it just really goes in like how is Gun going to do this? Because there's so many different ways he could play it. It's a really fascinating, just puzzle. It's like, wow, how do you make this work? And, and if there's anybody who can do it, as we've said, it's this guy. It's that guy. It's a guy who made a, a talking raccoon, uh, one of the best characters in, in the MCU. <laughs> no, if, if a man who made you cry over the death of an otter yeah yeah exactly so it's i have a theory because based on like piecing together some of the things that we've seen i didn't notice this when we were talking on the last thing we recorded but uh those pictures where mr terrific and superman are staring up at the side of a building standing next to each other you look at mr terrific's foot one of his feet is wrapped in this ad hoc bloody bandage oh i didn't and then in the footage where he's chasing apparently chasing crypto around he doesn't have that bandage and there's a shot where he's it looks like he's he's offering a milk bone and trying to get crypto to fly. Like, go on, go, go, go. And then he goes, ah, like he goes back. He, he leans back like he's screaming in pain. Well, some people say maybe uh, crypto accidentally lasered his foot. I, I don't, maybe not a laser. I think maybe he stepped on it by accident or bit him by accident getting the milk bone. I love that you are piecing this scene together. And there's more, there's more. So uh-huh. that, that opening, that's that establishing shot that I used for the Cleveland set, that big street yeah. that they were filming on the first two days. And I didn't notice this when I first saw it, but it's a wide shot of of that scene where Superman and Mr. Terrific are standing next to each other, looking up at the wall, and there's some rubble on the street. Yeah, and they're looking up. That's where he has the bandage on his foot. Yes, he is holding his foot weird. I didn't see the bandage, but he's holding the foot weird. I noticed that. My my theory is that perhaps you know Superman's busy doing something else, and Crypto, who maybe is usually in the yard, you know, he's he's penned up maybe at the at the fortress most of the time, just like anybody's normal dog would be at home. Yeah. He maybe somehow he got out of the yard essentially, <laughs> and so Mr. Terrific, already being a friend of Superman's, is running around with this with track. He's got this tracker, and somebody when he's running down the street, he's got this little white thing, which might be a tracker for Crypto's oh. tag. So he's like, "Where is he? Where is he?" And then uh, when that rubble comes, I wonder if Crypto like he's just un- unleashed, right? So he's accidentally like destroyed half of a you know part of a building and knocked some of the roofing off. Okay. And then when Superman's standing there looking up at him, and, and he's looking up and he's putting he's folding his arms like this, kind of yeah. you know. It's yeah. probably like crypto. Come on. <laughs> That's so, my guess is it might be in early in the movie that like crypto gets loose. And so they, they have to go through this thing of trying to get him back home. Here's again. here's an idea for a theory. Here's an idea for a theory. What the hell kind of wording is that? Here's an idea <laughs> for a theory. Here's a theory for an idea. What if, because again, we're purely speculating. Uh, Mr. Gunn, if you want to set us straight, give us a ring. What if crypto is newly arrived? What if it's not crypto escaping from Fortress of Solitude? What if crypto came with Kara? Or, well, no, I think oh. Kara actually doesn't show up till the end of the movie. Supposedly, I think she's oh, right. kind of a button scene. But so maybe, maybe crypto that's shows not up. the case. Maybe we just but, don't see her until the end of the movie, but crypto's running around because she's lost control. That's a possibility. Control. The only reason why I'm, I'm hesitant about that, the thing makes me think is that that tracker that he's holding, when he's yeah. in the same, looks like the same scene, where he's frantically running around trying to figure right. out where something is. Keep in mind, though, that? that this could be multiple scenes. I mean, because oh, this yeah. is happening in the same downtown where we see the ship and people getting out of it. So True. I think they're getting all of their exterior stuff. So whether or not the Mr. Terrific and Superman scene where they're standing there looking up at something, that may have nothing to do with crypto. But they also got the scene with Mr. Terrific and crypto like, you know, the same day. So it looks like it's all part. We just can't guess. But I like that theory. I mean, I, I think crypto, if if crypto's been around, would be better behaved. <laughs> if crypto is newly arrived or, I mean, we don't even know. What if like Luther found a way to make crypto go insane and he's using crypto to cause damage, while, you know, to distract him while he's doing his thing? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. In, in the comics, did the original origin of crypto, did he shut up in the rocket with Clark? Is that how... No, um, he here's, the, here's the lucky thing about uh, good old uh, Jor-El was he fired off Crypto first to test okay. the rocket. I got you. However, Crypto's rocket got hit by a meteorite, which threw it off course. And Jor-El was like, I got to compensate for that before I send anyone out. And he's like, sorry, Cal, about your pup. 
Oops. He actually did that in the comic. Very famous panel. Oops. Just a joke. Uh, and then, a then two page spread. <laughs> double page spread. <laughs> Uh, that was the day that kal <laughs> learned about loss. Anyway, so, <laughs> and then kal is sent to Earth, and he makes it without getting hit by a meteor. So what it is, is he grows up to be super boy, and he's probably, I don't think he's super baby. I think it's that, because yes, there was a, a period super of baby, super yeah. baby stories. Yeah. Oh, boy. But uh, I think he is supposed to be like 10 or something when crypto's rocket finally does arrive because it somehow course corrected and then he's like oh my god this is the best gift ever it's my dog and and i'm a still a boy and we're gonna be together forever buddy and they were and then what i love is that he becomes superman and then his cousin shows up in another rocket and he's like holy anyone else Anyone else on the way? You let me know. And she's yeah. like, well, y- y- my dad was your dad's brother, and he was also a brilliant scientist, and he shot me off from Argo City, but I was already a teen. Uh, and, and Argo City survived on its own until it started running out of... No, I don't think they were dying. Why did they send her? Was it just sort of like she'll have a better life with her cousin on Earth? Because Argo City, I think, never died. It just kept floating around out there. Okay, I may be getting stuff wrong, but yeah, so she's the third and last to show up and also in a rocket. Like, I'm your cousin from Krypton. Yeah. And he's like, What the f- hell? <laughs> and then it was later writers that came up with the idea that she was actually older, but she had been in some sort of suspended animation on her trip. Yes, she's aged more slowly. So, in other words, she had babysat baby cow, which is pretty adorable. Yeah. yeah so she shows up, she's like, going, I used to change your diapers, you piece of shit. <laughs> Very different vibe than like, I'm your cousin from Krypton. She's like going, oh, geez, you got big. Well, I'm not I'm not wiping up your crap now. Very famous dialogue also from one of the comics. <laughs> I'm not wiping up your crap now. So I, I think it depends on, on like I said, was how Gunn is going to portray Crypto. Because in the comics, yeah. Crypto classically was kind of hyper intelligent right he was more, smarter than your average dog he was hyper intelligent superman couldn't understand him as far as i know but he understood superman and and you would see his thought balloons and it was always like master seems very angry with mm-hmm. that with that robot man who's metallo maybe i should go help him it was always stuff like that so is crypto going to be like an autonomous you know can take care of himself kind of dog or is he going to be like a penned up normal dog that's and that's kind of what i'm guessing dude again with the costumes you know that we're seeing i just think we're going to get classic crypto we're not going to hear his thoughts but he's going to be in a cape dude he's going to be in a cape and it may have a yellow shield on it and you're going to lose <laughs> your crap <laughs> maybe he'll have the he always had the collar that had the superman shield too I'm just trusting Gunn. It's like, dude, if you're going to throw me into the DC universe, a comics accurate D- DC universe, I my bags are packed. I'm ready to go. Show me to the place because I want to hang out with these people. By the way, again, Mr. Gunn, you know, we have what, Chad? We got like 750 followers on YouTube, somewhere in there, because I check. Um, Mr. Gunn, we can guarantee you 750 <laughs> ticket sales. If you will invite me and Chad just to like a day of shooting, just a day of shooting. We won't spoil anything, but we will be promoters of your film. So call us. That's 750 tickets. We can guarantee. (laughs) All right. Uh, Speaking of James, I mean, he has just today. I think he's finally started chatting a bit about because people are asking him, aren't you worried about leaks? And, oh yeah, uh, I'd be interested. He said, nah. he said, "Well, you know, the, full, the pictures were fully expected. Obviously, we knew he, we knew that he knew that it was going to happen." But yeah. he also said, "Aren't you worried about people like spoilers?" And he said, "There's nothing, you know, there's no major spoilers here. Uh, I wouldn't shoot something like that out in broad daylight." So I was going to say earlier, when you say there's no nighttime shots, th- there may be a lot of more spoilery scenes they're filming, yes, either in a soundstage or you know, under greater security. So, right. I, and I will say, it's like, I don't know. Some of the things I've seen seem pretty damn spoilery for, with a uh, Superman being led away in cuffs, you know, by, <laughs> by the engineer and some mysterious person who people are still trying to figure out who he is. Well, Ultraman people is a popular are calling theory. him Ultraman. Uh, and I don't know if that's them actually knowing, 
But the U he is wearing on his costume, even though his costume is all black and we don't see his face, that is exactly the design of Ultraman's U mm-hmm. uh, shield. Which, I mean, Ultraman is just Earth 3 Superman, so he's in blue and he's red and da-da-da, all that. This one is an all-in-black and doesn't have a cape. But that U is definitely Ultraman. So I can see why people are going like, well, we don't know what the take is, but that's Ultraman. And yeah. I sent you that thing that was supposedly a leaked plot, which we don't, we can't verify. So we're not, I don't think we should repeat much of what we've read there. No, if you want it, you can find it. Yes. If you want to, it's easy to find, but people are calling him Ultraman and, and that is the engineer. And I'm assuming that's pre her uh, becoming the engineer and joining the authority. Yeah. Again, I think this movie's setting up a lot, which is actually good if it's all sort of, just dropped in as we go because they will probably do an authority film deal with that there. But if we meet the character here in her pre state, great. Uh, also we're going to be meet guy Gardner and Hawk woman and metamorpho. I'm assuming as fully formed and we don't have to have origins. They're just, we're just going to accept them as who they are and move on. So it's a, I think a Luther Superman story. Um, I don't think there's another villain uh, as much as I want Brainiac. Yeah. Uh, maybe they're saving him. Maybe they're saving him. I, I bet you they are. And if the rumor is correct, probably Supergirl is just an end of the movie thing. Which we we had predicted. Yeah, yeah. like a, a button. Which would be perfect. Be perfect. Um, have you noticed, too, I, 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 I noticed this earlier in some of the earlier shots, and then I kind of forgot about it. But today, these new shots that came out of him when he's lifting this thing or catching a thing in a, in a city square kind of setting the 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 lifting thing I'm oh, it looks so great but the the extras there, there's also a scene where uh christopher christopher reeve's son is there as an anchorman apparently oh really a, a cameo oh so, dude that's but great. when you look at that scene there's some close-ups of the other extras in the area all, many several times now i've noticed that the extras done all of them but quite a few of them are dressed in like a 70s kind of aesthetic oh and i, I know he's that. Gana said this is present day, but there's also there's been this theory that it's slightly He's kind of doing retro. like the animated series thing where it's a fusion of time periods. Right. We've already seen that in the stores. There's like stores who are still selling hi-fis, you know, which is totally yeah. a 70s thing or yeah, 80s yeah. thing. And but, people uh, are still buying the paper on the street. And the newspaper, right, which apparently costs $8.50. <laughs> Did you notice that? No, someone zoomed in on the price on it. But I really do like that idea. And that was one of the things about Gotham that I, that I actually liked. And that show had a lot of problems. But the thing I liked about it was the aesthetic where it was this weird amalgam of yes. distant past and future. That sort of thing. The MCU, and that's fairly, fairly accurate to the Marvel comics from the 60s on. Not only did they say, no, this is New York. It's not a made up city. Is that they made their stuff contemporary. I will say this is something I always notice, Even into the early 80s uh, in Marvel and DC Comics. They would draw, speaking of just randos on the street, with hats. And I was like, that's not them saying we're in a different universe. That's a fact that almost all those artists had been there since the 40s and 50s. So they were in their 60s drawing these comics. And I'm like going, guys on the street, they wear hats. And you're like going, dude, people stop wearing hats habitually in like the 60s. It's like by the 70s, most people were hatless unless it was a really bright, sunny day. Or if they did hats, they did something like a cap. But it still cracks me up when I'm reading like classic, you know, and it's 1970 something. And it's like the gangsters still wear suits and little fedoras. I'm like going, yeah, 1978. You're drawing this. Get rid of the fucking hat. Sorry. I'm sorry. I, I like that Donner put them in his movie, though, even though they yeah. were on the way out at the time. Yes. The fact that Clark Kent's walking around with the, the hat. There's one of the detectives is wearing one in the beginning. Right. So, But I, I do think that DC has always been in a slightly more stylized universe. And it has mm. a lot to do with the fact, because we talked about that when Gunn was saying like, that's what I love about the DC universe. You've got star city and Gotham and you've got central city and you've got metropolis. It's a fictional world. So it may as well be, you don't have to look at your watch and go, dude, that is so not 2024. It's, it's Superman time. It doesn't matter what year it's Superman time. Stop Superman time. And we don't. <laughs> Sorry. 
<laughs> and then he starts dancing back and forth yeah. and he's got parachute pants on. Uh oh. Um, uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Is they had some guy totally out of time, a like '90s uh, MC Hammer dude in the background. Yeah. Like, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> but that's the thing I, I'm I'm thinking they're leaning into, like you've pointed out, and I like the combo. I liked it in the animated series too, where you'd have them have these mm-hmm. computers on their desks, but they would be weirdly shaped and and retro and they all had their cell phones were like the big you know the yeah big the 80s car phones. phones yeah <laughs> and you're like what the hell kind of place is this but their yeah. cars looked pretty modern but you still had the police zeppelins and stuff like that i'm like police zeppelins i love it so bring it i yep. i want to see that that fictional universe i will say the lifting pose looks amazing did you see people online found some shot which was very darkly shadowed without going proof that he will have a different uniform? This one doesn't have the shorts. This one is a darker yeah. blue, darker red with no shorts. But it's really yeah. fuzzy and poorly lit, it's real so fuzzy. it's really like, hard to see. I guess what, it's a possibility he'll have different sure. outfits. It may, but it may not be him. But if that's the case, it might be this Ultraman character and his whatever his suit is, if that's happening. Yeah. Ooh. another thing we didn't talk about uh, no no, see- no i'm gonna keep, i'm gonna keep you- making the space for another five minutes <laughs> okay Ooh. i'll set a timer Beep. Oh, keep going oh <laughs> <laughs> no anyway, yes 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 did you see this scene i think it was just another one that just posted like I've a couple seen hours no ago scenes. i've seen a lot of stuff <laughs> well this was actual video that they're shooting oh. in the atrium of some building it looks like it might be the daily planet building that they're know. shooting in where clark and Lois are embracing each other and he's floating up. He's got this harness on. So it's, you know, a wire shot. Oh. He doesn't have the suit on, but it looks like it might be a test shot. So that wow. wonderful looking moment. I'm just curious, like, is, is he Clark there? Is he, does Lois know that he's Clark? Is that why he's not dressed as Superman? Or is it just because of the harness? You know? We don't know. Plus also, is that actually happening? Or is that like a dream sequence where he's like, <laughs> right. I wish I could tell her and he dreams about him as Clark with her floating up in the air. Or yeah. her having a dream like that. Or Brendan Jones having a dream like yeah. that. A beautiful dream. You know, one thing I, I find interesting, this is totally total side note, uh, talking about the adventures of Superman. My adventures with Superman? My adventures with Superman. Yes. Clark in that animation does have the flopped down hair. He does. Uh, also, his, his S is almost not exactly the same, but it is kind of angular. Oh, it's very close. It's very close. It's, it's interesting to me. And it, so, it has the tactical lines. His his costume. It does? Yeah, it does. It has little divisions and little yeah. uh, geometric. See, I, I wonder how much of this was planned. He doesn't have a little collar. I mean, again, as we, as everyone that's paying attention, and we're paying probably too much attention, but as they all have. That's a given. <laughs> <laughs> that's but the I, subtitle I, of this podcast. Yeah, paying too much attention. But I think that they we said a million years ago with that first image that they're doing tribute to so many versions because my adventures of Superman's S the cartoon is again, kind of kingdom come there and someone else online. Cause I'd forgotten it. I read it when it came out DC 1 million, which was Grant Morrison. He did a series of interconnected annuals. And this is in the early two thousands, I believe. And his idea was, why do I always like do if we're doing the future, people like saying, here's Superman's son. He goes, now let's go to the year one million and see what the icons become, because obviously none of the actual characters except for the Spectre are still the original. So it's all descendants and so forth. Well, the Superman of the year one million, it's not even Kingdom Come. It's the one from the movie. It's the one we're seeing now, because the one from the movie is not exactly Kingdom Come. And right. I'd forgotten that was the design. And I was like going, oh, well, that's purely lifted. They just took that. And the little collar is from, you know, uh, New 52. And all these little things are going, okay, okay, okay. They just dropped all the stuff in. And does it look good? It looks great. The first time I saw the the triptych of him leaping, like taking flight, yes. that was you sending that to me. And I'm just like, God, I mean, it's just it all looks, I need. It's all yeah. I need. I love that they're they're doing it that way where they're they're getting shots of him just jumping. You can see yeah. he's just like eh, off the ground. Which I mean, it's actually talk about throwback. That's the serial because what they would do. Yeah. I mean, 
uh, Adventures of Superman, which is George Reeves, you know, he would jump on a trampoline and out the window. And then you yeah. see that awkward, you know, he's right. laying on a crate and he's doing that. <laughs> um, but but the original serial had Kirk Allen jump and then they would do the animated Superman takes over. Which looks so cool even now. So the guy actually did just jump into the yeah. air and then they go, stop. Now we're replacing with the cartoon. The cartoon flies away. Yeah. And that's what we're going to get here is he's going to jump physically. And so that's CG's him putting the effort in. And mm-hmm. then they will CG and we won't be able to tell. It'll look great. I mm-hmm. already know they've probably from the day he got the job. James Gunn has to have said, all right, who are my VFX guys? Called him up, said, start working on Superman flying. Start yeah. working on the flying because that is always a key component and i will say snyder did a great job with the flying you know it's like he had the sonic oh, yeah. booms yeah, 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 he did yeah. all that stuff i liked that attention yeah. it's like yeah he would create sonic booms i actually i mean it's not my favorite superman suit but it does look good it's a nice looking suit it's not the colors i would have preferred right right and the, uh, people have tried to draw trunks on it that suit does not look good with trunks no and that, that's the way that one was designed that's the way it was meant to be yeah and i think they did a wonderful job with that suit that my only quibbles, as we've said many times, the only quibbles with that movie is the script. It's the yeah. script. Yeah. Nothing yeah. else. Yeah. So not even the casting, even though Diane Lane yeah. is, even though perhaps age appropriate, she's just way too hot. <laughs> <laughs> Still to this day, I've just never seen Ma Candace being hot. I'm sorry. I just <laughs> never have. Uh, it's like yeah, Aunt May too. Yeah. Uh, that was a big, I was like, however, the one thing I do approve there is it made no sense even in the original Spider-Man comics why his aunt would be an elderly woman years old, He's right? Fifty years old, and she looks to be sixty-eight. And she's like, I, I need my medicine. Let me make yeah. sure you get it. <laughs> Are you sure you're not my grand aunt? <laughs> Shut up, you little. I bet you were bitten by a radioactive spider, and you've kept it from me. <laughs> um. Angry Aunt May is going to be my next one man show is me doing Aunt May, but as angry and bitter, <laughs> I could have had love in my life into my seventies with Uncle Ben. Exclusive engagement, Brenda Jones and Angry Aunt May. <laughs> <laughs> one more thing about the suit, the new suit. Uh-huh. I'm ready. I, I am really curious about, and I'm hoping he doesn't go in this direction because I'm getting, I'm, re- I'm really tired of the beep, the, the, the nano suit that appears. Because that's all MCU now. And he he kind of started that, I think, with Star-Lord. I think he might have been the first person to do that with the the, the helmet forming, maybe. Was it Star-Lord or was it, it one of the Iron Mans? It, but I could be wrong. But anyway, it, that that's so an MCU thing. Like, they're all doing it now. Ant-Man does it. And, you know, Blue Beetle has, because uh, the that's alien true. thing is just building the suit around him. But the thing, the reason why I'm, I raised that question is because you mentioned this, you know, Christopher Reeves Clark was a classic thing of the suit underneath the shirt. I don't see how, and maybe this is why this version of Clark is scowling all the time because he's got this bulky <laughs> thing under his suit. He's like, no, oh, this sucks. But you can see there's one shot. I, I know people have been criticizing how the, the universe, the uniform is kind of thick fabric and it kind of bunches up. There's a shot where it looks like it's between takes where, where David Cornsweet's going like this in the <laughs> suit. Yeah, and you can see when he's got his arms up, it's really looks really uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, so I will say, I get the I get the criticism. I understand why people don't like it. So I'm really curious to see how they're going to play this in the film. How is he going to switch into that costume? Does he have it on him already, or is it something he has to put on really quickly, or does it generate? I have a feeling they they might just use the super speed option. Like in other words. He wouldn't, and to tell you the truth, in the comics, he wouldn't have needed it under his clothes anyway. The guy can move, like, as fast as light. So, I mean, it could have just been back at his apartment or even in the Fortress of Solitude, and he can change in two seconds. That said, I don't care. I always loved, here's something I always loved, that he would take his Clark Kent suit and he would super compress it yeah, and then stick it in a pocket in his cape. I'm like, (laughs) That's bat shit. It's as bat shit as Barry Allen's flash ring that opens up and the costume yeah, jumps yeah. out of it and expands on air. Content. Yeah. I'm like, God damn. I love comics. It's nuts. I love both of those ideas. That's Silver Age stuff, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That's Silver Age. Yeah. I don't think we ever saw Jay Garrick, the Golden Age Flash, going like, got to go home and get the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. All yeah. right. Yeah. Again. I'm the king of the comic book impressionists. 
there's not a single person that would be like thinking that was me doing Barry Allen. They're like, that's totally Jay Garrick. That guy got it down. I don't, oh God, do you think we're going to see Jay Garrick in this, in this, uh, we're going to see the justice society. I got to say the live action when they did John Wesley ship who played the nineties flash. Yeah. Did you ever watch star girl? No, no. On the you CW? It was good. Actually, you I enjoyed it. it. Yeah. I, I did. I enjoyed it. It's very unabashed, but he, who they also had him playing Barry Allen's father on the flash CW show. But they did a kind of on Star Girl kind of alternate reality thing where she meets the JSA, and they have John Wesley Ship playing uh, Jay Garrick, complete with the helmet. And I'm sitting there going like, "Oh man, that looks awesome! <laughs> he looks so good." So I'm totally down with them saying there's another Earth with a Justice Society that we're fighting in World War II, and I would be down with them meeting the alternate versions of themselves. That like, would be badass. And what oh. if if they're doing multiverse? What if it is literally uh, David Corn Sweat shaking hands with Brandon Routh or whoever you know, with like the silver in his hair to be like Earth Two Superman? I'm there, and I, I, I mean, but that's. I here's the thing I prefer before we get to multiverse and I'm a little yes. concerned about Marvel's uh, <laughs> slate because they're going so multiverse heavy. I love the multiverse and obviously we're 35 movies or something into the MCU. So yeah, they want to branch out and do that. All right. Yeah. I would just prefer good stories. Like if we yes. just get a good fantastic four story that isn't too worried about, Oh my God, there's 14 Reed Richards. I don't want that yet. Let's just have a good Fantastic Four movie. Um, and with this, it's like, let's stay in the DC universe, this one, for as long as we can before we start getting cute and going like, wouldn't I, it be cool if uh, Christian Bale showed up and shook hands with Robert Pattinson? And then uh, I'm like, well, that would be cool. But let's just have some good Batman and Superman movies first. How's I agree. I, I, I do like the idea of the multiverse thing of Justice yeah. Society being on. What was it? Earth one? What was that? No, they were Earth two. They which they would occasionally go like, what? And they, they said, well, it's because the Silver Age Earth is the one that discovered that there was an alternate Earth. So by default, they got the Earth one, even though the characters they were meeting were older and more established. Uh, and the older established characters are like, going, we don't care that we're Earth two. To us, we're Earth one. But, you know, fuck off. And I, I would not be surprised if that's what Gunn wants to do because he se- it seems like he's coming from a pre-crisis aesthetic, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, the suit is not pre-crisis, but parts of it are. Dude, if we have crypto, we're talking pre-crisis. If we have, yes. if we have Superman's cousin as Supergirl, then yes, we're pre-crisis. pre-crisis. Yeah. So, yeah, that's very true. So it kind of would be cool to have the Justice Society, either that or, but also maybe just in the past and maybe they appear in different movies. But... It would also be great if we could see them together, too. Yeah. And it could be time had, travel. So. I mean, since this is already establishing a DC universe where Superman's not the first one and there have been superheroes before him, even if it's just a couple of years or a few years, then why not have had them around since the 1940s? So there was already yeah. a Justice society. Oh, plus, pl- plus the, the, the bonus of, of opening up the multiverse, which I know just wait on it. Let's not do it immediately. That's exactly <laughs> it. Hang in there. It opens up the possibility for Earth C, <laughs> Captain's Carrot's world. <laughs> I don't think they're going to need that as an excuse. I just think they'll say, True. "Yeah, in in the uh, crazy multiverse, there's a there's this Earth that has talking." <laughs> Which, and I love that when they first introduced that character, it was a tie-in story with Superman. Yeah. Um, which was just great fun. Just as I always point out, it's around the exact same time that Mattel had their deal with uh, with DC Comics to have He-Man and Eternal oh. introduced in DC Comics. So Superman meets him like a couple of times. Superman hangs out on mm-hmm. Eternia and he's like, all right, He-Man, if you ever need me, you know what universe I'm in. Gotta go. Yeah. I gotta go. So, okay, we've filled almost an entire hour talking yeah. about Superman again. We're going to talk about Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes soon, but I am getting hungry. So yeah, I we went. <laughs> we just went another hour on Superman. Guys, don't complain. We're excited, <laughs> even though it's still a year away. I will say quickly, as I told Brendan in a message the other day, yes, I'm talking to you right now, audience. We don't Ooh, do that look at that. Often. How you doing? Straight to the camera. Yeah, um, <laughs> do a little sexy. A little sexy. A little oh, smolder. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there okay. you go. 
Okay. Um, I, I saw Kingdom of the of the Planet of the Apes a second time a, few, a couple of days ago. I was surprised it was still in theaters, and there were actually people there because uh, I went to a early evening show uh, on a Sunday, and I, I was like, I wonder how well this film is doing because I've heard, I've heard comments from a couple of the people in, intimating that or, or suggesting that it wasn't doing very that well. That wasn't a hit. It's doing very well. Yeah, it, worldwide, it's it's grossed nearly four hundred million dollars, so which is more than almost three times the budget that it was made for. So there will be more. <laughs> we haven't got an official I, announcement yet, but because after I after seeing it a second time, I was like, man, I want the next story, the next chapter in the story, so bad. I want they, Project Icarus to finally make it back home. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to happen in this trilogy. Hey, I think it's too soon. I want to see a guy smoking. But I do want. I, I'm uh, with you. I want, I want a to see she root in in the in a spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone you know is dead. <laughs> 20 centuries. I love, I had so much fun editing that episode. Oh, man. That was a delight. He's and such a the dick. way you put him in the actual sun. <laughs> with the oh, yeah. Snaps logo. Well, that's a new thing I'm doing now with that, that brief pause in the intro. Right? Yeah. Da, 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 da. I put, I'm putting this little thing in between there. Dude, you're an editing champ. You were, you were in the first one. The spider. I don't know if you saw spider. that one. <laughs> I want my spider. Um, so uh, all props to Chad who edits these things. I just show up and chat and then complain about being hungry. And um, <laughs> actually let us know, would you be okay with us doing slower releases, which we kind of been doing, but it, they get really boosted with Chad putting in that editing work. Or do you just want weekly us just ugly talking heads? You can let us know. Also, yeah. do you actually want prodigious saps uh, mm-hmm. merch? Do you want like t-shirts or something? Let us know because I want, <laughs> I want <laughs> one. Um, we appreciate your support. We, we, we do. love, and my brother is a huge fan of the Patreon. I, I get updates and I'm like going, when did that release? He goes, cause I'm not on the Patreon. He goes, <laughs> Oh, it's on your Patreon. I'm like going, Oh, Okay, great. So anyway, uh, we hope you're enjoying it, whether it's the free thing uh, here on YouTube or the podcast version or the Patreon version. You guys are awesome and you're supporting our nonstop jibber jabber. We will talk about this season of Doctor Who very soon. Yes, our, our Patreon supporter Emily has requested that. So and I needed to get caught up on it. Yeah, yeah. And I am very curious to talk about this season with Chad, which we haven't even off mic had a chance to chat about. Anyway, that's me trying to wrap up in a very clumsy way. But thanks, everybody. <laughs> thanks. You got anything to add? No, just that the content thing. I, I, I do ideally want to have both, you know, because I do yes. love the editing stuff so much. And it seems to people seem to dig it as well. It's, but it's I, I, adds but it, like 80% fun. But yeah, but it means I only have like one episode coming out like once every three, four weeks. And yeah, there's some really big things I'm still working on that I can't wait to show you. But especially for us to keep up with the Superman stuff, we kind of yeah. have to, we got to, we got to have a faster turnover with the content. I, so. I kind of agree. And this is stuff that's coming out almost daily. So uh, I hope that, that you guys are okay with us kind of tracking progress of stuff the second fantastic four starts shooting outdoors and there are leaks oh hells yeah we will be yes. talking about that too anyway much love to all the other nerds uh bye peace saplings bye, bye. bye. brennan brennan hey, brennan, 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 brennan 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 wake up hey brennan you sleep <laughs> You sleep? How could you sleep on this? Look at that. That's metamorpho. <laughs>